match of the evening is an international challenge singles match scheduled for one fall. They promised they would be back and here they are after Dragon Gate successfully invaded the UK last year. They are back with two nights of what promises to be the greatest wrestling action in these separate aisles this year. Hello everyone, I'm Irish Stu and I'm your host. We're going to take you through the first of these two nights of action. Shingo versus Yokosuka 2. Our first match features a debut. This is a young man who is stepping up a huge international challenge for Joey Hayes. Joey Hayes debuted in 2004. He's made his name around many different promotions here in the UK. to cultivate quite a reputation for himself but he's never going to have faced anyone quite like his opponent this evening. I would hazard a guess that many of the fans here have never encountered anyone quite like Cybercon before. Firing a pineapple. Cybercon is quite a comical looking character when you see him for the first time. But he is all business when he gets in that ring. Incredibly strong individual. Former arm wrestler. We're transitioning into professional wrestling gives you an idea of just how strong he is. And there's a visual representation of just how strong CyberCon is. Introducing first, wrestling out of the blue corner. Representing Team UK, hailing from Manchester, weighing 90 kilograms, Joey Hayes! And his opponent, wrestling out of the red corner, representing the Kamikaze stable, hailing from Osaka, Japan, weighing in at 1. 123 kilograms, Cybercon! And Joey Hayes is actually going to have a couple of years experience edge on Cybercon. Cybercon debuted in 2006. Cybercon has really been a fast learner. Where we're open the Twin Gate Champion and open the Triangle Gate Champion in Dragon Gate. He was initially considered too small in the New Japan Dojo system. Met up with Shingo, who invited him along to Dragon Gate. A dojo which has no size limitations, and he has flourished ever since. Despite Joey Hayes being the, the, the local favourite as far as countries is concerned, there's a lot of Cybercon fans here in attendance. Very hardcore Dragon Gate loving audience here. This is pretty much the start that Joey Hayes did not want. He's already started to fall prey to the power advantage. Hayes using his speed is what he's got to do. Going for a side headlock. Oh, 
Kong easily able to send him up into the ropes and well I'm not going to suggest anyone does this but that's got to feel like running into a wall Cyber Kong challenging Joey to have another go Third time lucky? No, I'm afraid not. Side headlock now from Cyberkong. And he shoots off Kong and again. Kong's absolutely running through Joey Hayes. Hayes needs to try and utilize more of his speed advantage. Of course, in order to do that, he is going to try and get some distance between the two of them. Try and hit and move. Crazy chops from Cyber Kong. Yes, the Zemo is a gorilla press. Cyber Kong is an absolute monster close up. Knows that better right now than Hayes. Hayes has spent quite a lot of his career here in the UK in the tag team ranks. Debuted as part of the Manchester Massive, was also one of the models in SAS. Most recently, he's been tagging regularly as part of Northern Exposure. Right now, he's looking for someone, anyone who he can tag out to. Charges. Big splash to the corner. Hayes just cannot get anything started here. No sustained offense at all. <laughs> he is still in this fight. Self, that, that's not the smartest move. Shoulder to the face. Hayes crumples. Cybercon turning it around into a half crab. Hayes gets to the ropes as well he needed to. I know Cybercom taking a very deliberate pace here. Hayes rolls through, tries to get a sunset flip. Eats an elbow for his troubles. That's pretty much been the story of this match so far. Kong again goes in. This time, Hayes moves out of the way. Going back for the, the shots again to the head. Bad idea. Once again, Kong cuts them off. Hayes trying for a drop kick there, trying for anything that might work. Spinning kick. Heel right to the face. And for the first time, Cybercom knocked down. Come back 
to his feet. Hayes, an opportunity again, going back to the head with the elbow. Again, keeps going back to that for some reason. This is the sense on. Now he's trying for a body slam again. Oh, does not work. You have to question that. There's a cover. Just the two. Whatever game plan Joey Hayes has been working on, he needs to move to plan B right about now. Big crossbody, there's a cover. Referee position, just the two. Tries to run in, perhaps for a, a running kick there, gets caught. This is his knee taken out by Cyber Kong. Big Lariat from Cyber Kong. And that might be the beginning of the end. Picks him up, drops him down like he was nothing. There's a cover. Oh, and Kong. Just picking up Hayes. Well, that's, that's always a cardinal mistake. Oh, unless you follow it up with a power bomb. There's a cover. Two and three. Decisive victory by Cyber Kong. Gentlemen, the next match is a singles match scheduled for one fall. <laughs> Look at that, Sir Laurie LaRue prepares us for the second encounter here this evening. This one is likely to be a potential show stealer. Two British talents going out of here. Two people who know each other very, very well and who have fought up and down the halls of Great Britain. We are first going to welcome British cruiserweight champion and the man who made his first ever appearance last year at Dragon Gate's UK Invasion. He is the Lion Kid. Who is the man who he defeated to win that championship? None other than his opponent here this evening, star attraction Mark Haskins.
here comes the star attraction himself, Haskins, to think a mixed reaction. Quite a few people cheering Haskins here. Unlike last year, but since last year, Mark Haskins has gone over to Dragon Gate, represented himself and British wrestling tremendously well over there. As we said, Haskins and Lion Kid know each other inside out. It's only fair that these two men with a similar style get a chance to fight out on this big stage. Representing Team UK, came from the New Forest, weighing in at 70 kilograms, Lion King! And his opponent, wrestling out of the red corner, Hailing from Oxford, weighing in at 90 kilograms, the star attraction, Mark Haskins! the bell and we are underway. Both of these men had banner years since last year's Dragon Gate Invasion show. In fact, you can look at the UK Invasion show last year as being a, a major milestone in both of these wrestlers' careers. Tries the wrist lock. The reverse side of it by Haskins. You know, I was in attendance last November in Sittingbourne when Lion Kid defeated Haskins for that Cruiserweight Championship. A scintillating match. I'm expecting nothing less here this evening. the wrist lock so far and Haskins is taking Lion Kid down first. Nice cover attempt there from Lion Kid. Those are riding into a sort of freestyle octopus took it down into a cover. Drops down, floats over into a front chancery. And I fully expect this match will take to the skies at some point. Lion Kid, very high flying competitor. Haskins, one of the most dynamic young talents in the country. Haskins goes underneath. Oh, elevates the flipping Lion Kid over the top. Lion Kid cannot take Haskins down. It's the Irish whip Haskins over the top. Comes back in. Rolls through into an arm drag. Very nice from Haskins. Haskins tries the charge. Misses Lion Kid to the middle rope. Follows it up with a drop kick and Haskins to the outside. Watch out for Lion Kid. Fakes out the dive. Haskins moved out of the way anyway. Oh, an acai moonsault from the apron. Well, you'll see a lot of guys will try that acai moonsault. They will 
bounce off the middle rope. Lion Kid does not even need that. Just bounces off the apron. And what's this Lion Kid? Floats over looking for potentially a sunset flip. Gets it. Just a two count. Haskins with a reversal. Takes Lion Kid back to his speed. Irish whip. Misses the elbow. Still the world head scissors. Nicely done by Lion Kid. Haskins ducked underneath that. Lion Kid was able to stop himself. Oh, and that time, Lion Kid came in and got thrown straight shoulder first into the steel post. What's Haskins doing here? Watch this. Oh! Wheelbarrowed him right into the post once again. Just checking on Lion Kid outside the ring. Andy Quilden in the ring now gonna lay the count down. Get oh, Haskins has learned so much and developed so much since going to Japan on a regular basis. He's added a whole new wrinkle to his arsenal. A state-of-the-art Japanese style with the Lucha Libre influences. A great grounding. The basics of professional wrestling as well. Tried for the cover, just got a two-cut, but you can see he's going to continue to work on that arm, I think. Multiple attempt by Haskins and Lion Kid able to reverse out of it. Try for a sunset flip. Oh, and Haskins. So confident in his ability, he was able just to reverse that. may have seriously injured Lion Kid's arm. Divorce court, so called because it divorces your shoulder from the rest of your body. There's a cover. Lion Kid kicks out, but you've got to start wondering if there's any serious damage has been done to that arm and shoulder. I mean, how could there not be? A couple of hammerlock, hammerlock into a Northern Light suplex cover. Continue to work on it. Look at that variation on a Fujiwara armbar. Great technique and so difficult as well with Haskins' body weight right across Lion Kid for Kid to reverse out of this. Indeed, he couldn't. Now Haskins just transitions into the usual Fujiwara armbar. Lion Kid able to stretch a limb out, get to the bottom rope. Both of these men undefeated in Dragon Gate UK. Lion Kid defeating Styx in his debut last year. Askins defeating Kagatora last year. Lion 
Kid coming back with a kick, and that might be his best offense now. Still feeling that arm. Haskins, though, ducked underneath, and look at that, as quick as a cat. Oh! Sosa Lion Kid, drop kick to Haskins on the way down. charges again using his feet it's all he's got at the minute until he can start to get some feeling back in his arm to cover off that elbow assisted drop asking stunned but he has not done enough to keep the star attraction down axe kick there from Lion Kid well, Haskins challenging Lion Kid. Not sure you want to do that. Lion Kid's got a, a vicious kick. To mention the chops. And Lion Kid challenging Haskins. Haskins responds in kind, but Lion Kid coming back. Reversal of the cover into two. Two kind of again, crucifix. Once again a two. Haskins comes up with the wrist lock. Lion Kid reverses out of it. Into down into a sunset flip, not even a one cut. Standing moonsault from Haskins, nobody at home. Quebrada from Lion Kid. And he pulls him right there for every cover. Still cannot get the three count, but Haskins now starting to show signs of fatigue. Elbows from Haskins. Ringing around the Broxport Civic Hall. Haskins drops down, nips back up. Super kick. Hasta la vista, baby. That could be it. Just a two. Haskins now having to start to break out some of his signature offense against Lion Kid. Nice elbow to the outside. Watch this comes in into the monkey flip. Lion Kid lands on his feet. Short clothesline. There's a the cover. Then just two and a half. the crowd into it. I think he thinks that Lion Kid's in a compromised position. He certainly is not. He's been put on that top rope. Let's see what Haskins can pull out from here. Trying to pick him up to a fireman's car. Lion Kid fires back. Now, Lion Kid diving DDT. Haskins immediately trying to get back to his feet, does not want to be covered. Spinning back kick, there's a cover. One, two, and oh, again, just a three, just a two. Very, very close. Again, trying that spinning back kick, and now Haskins was trying for a cutter, didn't get it. Picked up by Kidd. Tied up in the tree of woe. Oh, and Haskins knew enough to know to get out of the way, but 
He's in such a compromised position that you just can't do it. And Kid coming up. Oh, stomp to the midsection. Nice new variation there from Lion Kid. There's a cover. Stomp right to the midsection. You can take the wind out of you in a hurry. Both men really feeling it now. Great action here. We've been two of the best that Britain has to offer. Lion Kid charges. Haskins elevates him over the top. Oh, and jumps right into a cutter. There's a cover from Haskins. One, two, oh, two, oh, two again. Haskins pulling for the shooting star. Of course, that shooting star press. Going to the top rope, the line kid already moving. Haskins doesn't see it. Gets caught up, caught out there. Kid to the outside. Oh, elevated head scissors take down. And now this time, jumping blockbuster. There's a cover. Again, just a two. the fans chanting Lion Kid. They've gone back and forward on this match just as the momentum has gone back and forward. Lion Kid now. This could be it. Stop and acknowledge the crowd. Maybe a bad idea. Goes upstairs. Oh, and nobody home for the shooting star press. Haskins. Picking him up. Takes him down with a spinning Uranagi. German suplex with a bridge. There's a cover. One, two. And Haskins just threaded those two moves together like a pro. Fantastic work. And now, wrist clutch picks him up. Lion Kid drops down with the schoolboy. Uh, that was too close to comfort for Haskins. High kick. Gets the top going for it all. Moonsault gets caught. Haskins, knee to the midsection again, picks him up. Have we seen this before? Cradle to the grave. Haskins, one, two, three. Mark Haskins victorious in this Battle of Britain. Round of applause around the Broxbourne Civic Hall for this tremendous match. Mark Haskins returning to Dragon Gate here in the UK. He's got to be so proud to be able to come back with a win. To defeat one of his biggest rivals, the Lion King. Sky is the limit for the star attraction. And take nothing away from Lion Kid. Eventually outclassed on the night, but came very, very close. Upsetting the star attraction here. opinion it's only going to be a matter of time the lion kid gets that call to go across to the east as well or Jordan dragon gets a more full-time basis ladies and gentlemen give it up for the efforts of the lion king
gentlemen, the next match is a rematch from last year's Dragon Gate UK Invasion. It is probably the most hotly anticipated rematch in UK wrestling. It is a singles match scheduled for one fall. Last year, at Dragon Gate's UK Invasion, there were so many great matches, but there was one that stood out just a little bit ahead of everything else. A match which absolutely stole the show. Shingo and Susumu Yokosuka just completely blew everyone's mind. People have been wanting to see the rematch ever since on the first opportunity that Dragon Gate UK has to present Shingo versus Yokosuka 2. They've taken it. Here comes Shingo, seconded by his kamikaze brethren in Cybercom. Shingo made his debut in 2004, one of the first Dragon Gate Treeborns. Amazingly enough, produced a performance last year that had everyone on their feet while suffering from a tremendous fever. If anybody met Shingo either before or after the show last year, they will know that Shingo could barely walk. Had a really bad case of the flu. That is Shingo, you're absolutely right, Cyberpunk. But he is here tonight and he is 100%. He's a Opponent though, one of the most consistent performers in Dragon Gate history, going right back to Toriyum on Japan as well. Once wrestled as Susumu Mochizuki, and well, he'll have something to say about that tomorrow night. He is now known now as Susumu. Yokosuka. Both of these men's resumes read essentially like a what is it to do in Dragon Gate list. Both of these men former Dream Gate champions. And former Twin Gate champions as well. Triangle Gate champion. Yep, they've done that as well. Two of the premier exponents of this state of the art style we call Dragon Gate. Susumi often the quiet member of the roster. Sort of the guy who sneaks up on you without realizing it and just consistently produces some of the greatest matches in the company every year. He was successful last year and did a lot of fans. Introducing first, wrestling out of the blue corner, representing the Kamikaze stable, hailing from Yananashi, Japan, weighing in at 95 kilograms, Shingo! His opponent, wrestling out of the red corner, representing the Kainazuka. Hailing from Yokozuka, Japan, weighing in at 75 kilograms, Sushuru Yokozuka!
referee for this rematch then will be Chris Roberts checking both men. As mentioned, Shingo representing Kamikaze. He has another member of his stable here with him. Susumu does not. His partner, Kness, there. He's back in Japan. Listen to the crowd immediately. This is the match that everyone has wanted to see. tie up. Shingo very strong but Susumu deceptively powerful as well. Susumu though mostly known as a technique master. Shingo mostly known as a power fighter but both of these men are rounded competitors. Moves. favorite maneuver, the move maneuver that brings the most victories is the Jumbo no Kachi. Translates as victory for Jumbo, it's a lariat based on the lariat that was once thrown by the legendary Jumbo Suruta. And when Jumbo Suruta used to beat people, the announcers used to scream Jumbo no Kachi. Susumu has perfected that technique. What brought him victory last year? Shingo has any number of variations and moves, always looking to try and add new techniques. Got the last falconry and the original falconry, two variations on the same move. Also, the made in Japan. And, well, shoulder to shoulder, you can see nobody moves. Shingo with a kick to the mid section, Irish whip drops down, sets himself way too early. Oh, that time Shingo knocks Susumu for a loop. Who can forget last year when these two men stood in the middle of the ring and just challenged each other's manhood to hit each other, turn about until one of them fell. One of the most incredible things I've ever seen in a British wrestling ring. You see that the technique of Susumu goes downstairs, gets the judo style trip. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps starts to work on the leg. With so much of Shingo's offense being power based, taking away that vertical base is a pretty good start. Um, Susumu going for the, the much fabled hair of Shingo. Shingo used to be the owner of one of the most outrageous mullets in wrestling. Had that shaved off, he's slowly growing it back. Stairs, taking the leg out. Almost got a heel hook on there, but Shingo uh, forced to go to the ropes eventually. Remember as well, last year's match, Shingo did take a lot of offense to that leg. It's one of Susumu's big trademarks is to continue to work on that leg. And I think if Shingo has got any weaknesses in his game, it's perhaps the fact that he sometimes believes he is unbeatable. Instead of protecting that leg, he was basically encouraging 
Yokosuka to continue to work on him. Yokosuka needs no encouragement. First elbow from Shingo. And much like the last match, this is another one without a clear fan favorite. The fans being carried along with the wave of the match here. Oh, watch, watch out Shingo throwing down referee Chris Roberts and now Cybercon as well. Getting involved. Roberts. Forcing the break. Reminding Shingo that he is the referee. This is not a no disqualification match. Well, obviously, no one here in the Broxbourne and Civic Hall wants to see this match end with disqualification. We want to see a decisive winner here. As soon as someone starts to chat in preference of one man, one of the men, fans of the other man start to rally behind their man as well. Uh, head scissors right in the middle of the ring from Shingo. Uh, head scissors is not going to win a match for anybody, but it's going to do a lot to try and sap your opponent's resistance. It's very difficult to get out of. Susumu preparing just to try and roll to the ropes. Force the break. Shingo using the ropes to his advantage there. Cybercon continuing to make life difficult for referee Chris Roberts. section, pick up, gut buster, DDT threaded together beautifully, there's a sent on, and there's a cover, one, two, seems quite early in the match but already a two count, a body scissors, Again, trying his best just to keep Yokosuka off his game. It's just reasonably close to the ropes, and Cybercon pulling the ropes away. Again, the referee Chris Roberts getting involved. Cybercon is going to be very careful, he's going to get sent to the back here. Testing his innocence outside the ring. I think we all can see he's anything but. Get Kong out, say the crowd. Kong protests in English that he doesn't speak English. I'm not sure we buy that one. Susumu, though, coming back. Kick to the back. Oh, beautiful. Buster forward with a drop kick. Yeah. 
Susan are really starting to feed off this crowd here. And Clown distracting the referee. Tupac's attempt does not work. Shingo is reverse line. Nice reversal from Yokosuka turns it into a vertical suplex. Suplex. There's one from Shingo. Oh my goodness, one from Susumu. Didn't quite get another. Uh, watch this now. There's an exploder suplex for you. I missed him. There's another exploder. Well, last year we got a chop battle. This year we got an exploder battle. That doesn't tell you the stakes of the race this year. I don't know what does. Meeting in the middle of the ring like two bulls. Each one going for a lariat, each man going down. The volume is ramping up here. Gonna go for the bull run again this time. No, Susumu charges. Shingo crumples. Susumu selling Shingo up in the top rope. Kong again trying to distract the referee. in the ring. Susumu looks like he's trying for a vertical suplex from the top rope. No! Exploder from the top rope! Wow! There's a cover. One, two... whether it was two or three, it was definitely a two. They'll be setting them up. Got various variations of moves he can do from that power bomb lift. Irish whip attempt. Oh, man. his back can't be that hurts. Suplex there, he's got a number of variations again he can do from that position. Picks him up, drops him down in a backbreaker. Watch especially if you try 
tries to do a wrist clutch in there. He could be setting him up either for the last Balkan or the original Balkan. There's a backdrop suplex snapped over. There's a cover. Support and gets it. So they set him up perhaps for the last falconry. And they attempt that, it misses. Nice reversal from Susan who takes him over. Oh, and look at this. Look at the power, look at the strength. Shingo from the top row. There's a cover. One, two. Just a two. Cyber Kong again protesting at this three. I don't know why Susan Yokosuka kicked out of that either. He still got something. picking up Susumu here. This could be a mistake. In my estimation, Yokosuka may be one big move away, and this could be it. Looking for the Lariat. No! Lariat comeback from Susumu. Susumu down to one knee. Oh, he wasn't knocked into next week. I have no idea. The crowd feeding Susan, who comes back with a lariat of his own. Shingo. Uh, Susan, can't do it. Shingo thinks he's got it. This could be it. There's nothing behind those elbows. Yokosuka spent and Shingo getting his second wind. his opportunity to wipe last year's match out. No! Now Susumu is starting to get his second win. Shades of last year, Susumu Yokosuka will not stay down. Boy, there's something behind those elbows and lariats. Watch out. A picked up a DVD, Death Valley Driver. Close line from Yokosuka. And again, there's a cover. Incredibly, incredibly, Shingo still kicking out. This match not over yet. Set up for the Mugen. Drops him down. That's one in titles. That's one in many matches. That's going to be it. And it's not. It is not it. The Mugen so often. Susumu's go to move. Doesn't get the job done. Susumu's feeling it. I don't think he's going to make the same mistake that Shingo might have made. 
He's going to go for another one immediately. Shingo drops to one knee. Reverses out of it. Wrist catch picks him up. Oh, reversal. Cover. Susmu. There you go. There's the cover. One, two. And just, just two once again. Made in Japan. From Shingo. So Susumi is kicked out of that. Shingo is kicked out of the Mugen. We've seen any number of lariats. What is it going to take? Set them up here. This is going to be the last falconry, but no. Again, Susumi comes out of it. There's the clothesline. Slap. Oh, spinning tornado clothesline. My goodness, took his head off cover. One, two. And just a two once again. Incredible action. Everything that we hope from this match is. And he's picking him up and drops him down. It's the original falconry. There's a cover. And he gets a three. Gets a three from the falconry. The fans around Broxbourne Civic Hall stand up as one to salute these two warriors. This match, everything that we hoped it was going to be. A fitting successor to last year's match of the year here in Britain. And quite how these men were able to push their bodies through what they did quite frankly beyond me that's what makes Dragon Gate so special it took Shingo bringing the original falconry back out of his arsenal to defeat Susumu Yokosuka and they are now tied one one. What a match.
takes their seats after the interval and we are prepared for the semi-main event. I call this a semi-main event. This could be a main event in any Dragon Gate show. Between this man, Naruki Doi, who has really become for all intents and purposes one of Dragon Gate's biggest stars in the last couple of years. The longest reigning Open the Dream Gate champion in Dragon Gate history. He will be taking on the man who actually defeated him for the Dream Gate earlier this year. There he is, Yamato. So considered by many to be the future Dragon Gate Mother Kamikaze stable member. So once again he will benefit from the ordering skills of CyberCon. Wrestling out of the blue corner. Representing the World One Stable, hailing from Narrow Japan, weighing in at 80 kilograms, Naruki Doi! And his opponents, wrestling out of the red corner, representing the Kamikaze Stable, hailing from Rocky Japan, weighing in at 82 kilograms, Forgetfulness there, but everyone knows who this is. This is Yamato from a mixed martial arts fighter in Pancreas turned professional wrestler for Dragon Gates. Unseated Doi earlier this year to win the Dream Gate, as I mentioned. But just recently in Japan, Yamato dropping that title to Masato Yoshino. So this, in every sense, is a massive battle between the two top contenders in the Dreamgate Championship. Looking for advantage, working over the wrist. And the rookie Doi's accomplishments are quite incredible. For the Dreamgate champion, as we said, the longest running Dreamgate champion ever. Former Bravegate champion, former Triangle Gate champion on seven occasions. Former Twin Gate champion on two occasions. Former Summer Adventure Tag League winner on three occasions. Former GHC Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champion. Also, former Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champion. A title which he won in Liverpool in England, funnily enough. time Naruki Doi was the standard bearer the Dragon Gate Yamato though had the secret he had the combination to unlock the puzzle that is Naruki Doi earlier this year but this will be the first singles match between the two since that title change you've got to imagine if Yamato can once again defeat Doi. 
rematch against Yoshino should be right in his immediate future. As Yamato looking over the Greco Roman knuckle lock, a test of strength. Nice reversal from Doi. That flips through. People do mistake the Dragon Gate style for being, you know, very lucha libre influenced, and there's certainly a lot of lucha influence in there. But there's a lot of basics, a lot of grinding, a lot of Japanese style there as well. Doi can fly very, very fast, but. His rampaging muscle gives you an idea as to the style he likes to employ. He continues to work over the arm. Goes it around into a variation on the Tequila Sunrise. It's a half Boston Crab. Yamato <laughs> seeks solace in the ropes. He knows that the referee will force Doi to step back. again, working on the arm with the over the shoulder arm breaker. So far, oh boy, Yamato though goes for the face. Doi, beautifully done, just steps backwards. And Yamato disappears under the ring. As Doi realizes this, he does now. Yamato's out the other side. Doi's going to watch out, drop kick to the back of the knee. Excellent work from Yamato. Tries to lock on a figure four. Look at Yamato trying to pull himself to the middle of the ring. He's not one going to be able to get to the ropes here. Going to try to turn over if he can. If he can turn on his stomach, it will reverse the pressure of the figure four. Managed to do it for a second, but. Luckily enough, got right close to the ropes. And both of these men possess two of the most devastating signature maneuvers that you're ever likely to see. Ruki Doi with the muscular bond, Yamato with the Galleria. Continue to work over the leg. Half crab, and again we can hear the crowd very much split in this. Some fans, kamikaze, some of World One. This is the stable represented here by the Rookie Doi. Doi 
Joe may have suffered an injury here. He's taking a lot of time on the cameras here trying to get up. Continuing to work over this knee, and whenever this goes on, the more difficultly it is for Doy to get out, the more it's likely that the matter could do an injury here to Doy. To the pain in his face as he gets to the ropes, offers him temporary respite. to be on the impression that Doy was right for the pickings. I'm not quite sure that is the case. An ankle lock here, Doy gets back to his feet. Enzigiri. But again, the drop kick to the back of the knee. Anybody in Dragon Gate, I would not want to take lightly. It would be Naruki Doi to punish you in so many ways. Yamato now goes for the charge, eats the boots. Drops all into the corner. Watch out. Dai Busu, that cannonball. Surprised he's able to run on his legs at all. Paying the price. Let's see what Doi's got here. Tries to pick him up. Maybe looking for the Doi Fives. He's not able to that maneuver you see Yamato moving free and easily but ran straight into an elbow Doi again using what he can wrapping his opponent up in the ropes elbow drop kick now watch out referee gonna move out of the way Again, somersault sent on. Doi still very much feeling that knee though. But if he can get the blood circulating around that just enough, he can get that adrenaline flowing. Maybe set up again for the Doi Fives. Tried it, couldn't do it. Nice reversal. Doi Fives is that face buster maneuver that he loves to use. Could not do it. Oh, and again, right for that weak point. Doi picked up, dropped down. And look at that dragon screw leg whip. Yamato again trying to go for a figure four. Brilliant positioning. Figure four leg lock right in the middle of the ring. And that last time, Doi was able to turn around and eventually get to the ropes. He's right in the middle of the ring here. He has 
taken a lot more punishments. Pull himself backwards, do whatever he can. Not far enough. I haven't seen the rookie Doi in this amount of trouble since, well, since the last time Yamato beat him. Yamato <laughs> get out, go for it, roll up, An inside cradle there from Doi. Just a two count. Yamato goes for the clothesline, misses again. Pick up, oh, Rydeen Bomb! Elevated Rydeen Bomb there from Doi, just gets a two. To get any move that Nanuki Doi has to do, which involves putting anything on his knees, are going to be so difficult for him. See him just trying to get that blood flowing again, trying to get some feeling back into that leg. Trying to block out the pain as best as he can. Both men exchanging elbows. I have to su suppose that Yamato of the two is the one is a little bit fresher. Doi may be the stronger of the two. <laughs> Nicely done from Amato, but Doi, the counter of his own, looking for the Bakatari, misses. Picks him up. And again, he was going to go for the Doi Fies, but he's gone right into a sleeper. Yamato with a sleeper hold. Choke Sleeper has met well in several victories. Oh, and again, Doi tried to set up a charge, but Yamato was right there. Drops him down. Gore Buster kick to the head. Pick up Grand Buster. There's a cover. That could be it. Doi in trouble. No. Gonna go for the gallery and now that pick up into a tombstone. Didn't get it. Wheelbarrow tried a muscular bomb, didn't get it. Reverse DDT eventually. We talked earlier on about the gallery and the muscular bomb. We just saw each of them tease within seconds of each other. Surely you have to believe that if either of those moves successfully hit, this match will be over. Boy, I think starting to get some feeling back in that leg. Trying to pick him up again. Going to go for that muscular bomb. Oh, it doesn't get it. Yamato rolls through. Goes for a cover. Just a two and now. Into an STF. The step over toe hold face lock. Excellent positioning. Doi has got one free leg, which if he if he knows where he is in the ring, he might be able to get to the ropes. He's kicking with it. He's trying his best. And he gets there. Good ring awareness. confident that he's got Doi in a compromised position. There's no doubt that he does. Rookie Doi is never beaten until that three counts. Unanswered elbows now coming in from Yamato. Oh, and again, go back for the choke sleeper again. A lot 
of trouble. And this could be the Galleria again. That lift up into the tombstone. If he hits it, it's got to be over, but no, Doy gets back into the corner. He's found himself in an awkward position, however. Cyber cutting distract from the referee again. Quite sure for why. But Yamato trying perhaps for a suplex from that position. Doy trying to get out of that if he can. Doy looks like he's trying to pick up Yamato. And they try for the Doy fives from the middle rope. Sure, that's what he's going to look for. Watch out for it. Doi fives. There's the cover. Oh, just the two. Avalanche style Doi fives. Perhaps another Doi Fives attempt. Right and left elbows coming in from Yamato. Headbutt. And the rookie Doi is not giving up. What a strike attack. Oh, look at this. Bakatari sliding kick. Again, once more for the Doi Fives. And once more, looks for the back of Tari, connects. There's the cover. Two, three. <laughs> Tremendous come from behind victory from the former Dreamgate champion. He's going to have that title once again in his future. Amazing performances from both men. But on this night, the rookie boy is once again your victor. Civic Hall. Dragon Gate has become synonymous with the trios tag matches. Dragon Gate six man. The match where all of these guys have really cut their teeth with the Lucha Libre influence. It's the match which is most often chosen by people to explain what Dragon Gate is all about. Prepare for all action. Here comes the first competitor, Masaki Mochizuki. Mochizuki's 
Suzuki, a former Dream Gate champion, wrestled throughout Japan. Debut back in 1994, he's going to be the most experienced man in this match. Suzuki coming into this match with no particular stable affiliation but for the for the night only he will be adopted to a warrior stable alongside this man, Dragon Kid. Dragon Kid believed by many to be the greatest high-flying wrestler in the world today. Who's innovated so many moves? I was initially told he was too short to be a professional wrestler. Before he was trained by Ultimo Dragon, eventually blessed by being given his name. And here comes. The man who is synonymous with the entire promotion. He is Shima. Shima along with Dragon Kid, one of Ultimo Dragon's original trainees back in the mid-90s. Been at the top of both Toriyuma in Japan and Dragon Gate for many years. That forceful trio we challenged this evening team consisting of the stable of World One. That music. Everyone knows what it means. It means this man, B.B. Hulk. One of the new generation in Dragon Gate. B.B. Hulk's hair looks a little bit strange to you, that's why. Not too long ago lost a hair versus hair match in Japan. The British hero of Dragon Gate. The man that gravity forgot. And the current Brave Gate champion. Right around the colors of Great Britain, he is. wrestler on the planet and the current Open the Dream Gate champion is Masato Yoshino the 
Yoshino with most experience on his side debuted in 2000. Introducing first the team wrestling out of the blue corner. Representing the Warriors stable. Hailing from Tokyo, Japan. Weighing 85 kilograms. Toshaki Motizuki! Coming from AT Japan, weighing in a 70 kilograms, Dragon Kid! Coming <laughs> from Osaka Japan, weighing in his 83 kilograms, Sima! <laughs> and their opponents, wrestling out of the red corner, representing the World One Stable. Hailing from Osaka, Japan, weighing in at 75 kilograms, Masato Yoshino! Hailing from Hokkaido, Japan, weighing in at 78 kilograms, B.B. Hunt! Hailing from Newcastle, England, Tension in here with a knife. There's an expectant air around the Broxbourne Civic Hall, which is, to all intents and purposes, the mecca of professional wrestling here in Britain. This building, more than many, have seen so many classic matches, and they are about to be graced by one right now. The Dragon Gate six man. Golden. The bell has gone and we are underway and Pac will be leading from the front for World One. Pac the Grave Gate Champion. Mochizuki taking an opportunity just to get a little bit of a walk. I must admit that's not exactly what we were expecting. Shima often used to being the most popular man in a match. It's pretty unlikely that's going to be the case tonight in there with Pac. Salute. Over the top back foot from Shima. Cuts Pac off seven to the corner, follows him in. Pac over the top. Pac so fast. Running Rana. Shima deposited in his own corner. Masato Yoshino and alongside his eternal rival Dragon Kid these men had a match last year Dragon Kid's UK invasion this is a rivalry that's lasted almost a decade Watch with Dragon Kid, especially so many of those satellite heads as we take down variations. The tag is made. In comes Masaki Mochizuki in with BB Hulk. Hulk with only five 
five and a half years experience, as we say, much as she's significantly more experienced. Mochizuki unique, and it was one of the people who did not come through the Dragon system. Eventually find a home here, but trained originally FMW amongst other places. Genichu Tenru, a big part of the play in training. Masaki Mochizuki. Halt up and over now. A sweep from Mochizuki, watch out. Kick to the spine. Lucha Libre rules, of course, here. As soon as a wrestler goes out of the ring, one of his partners can come straight back in. Yoshino jumped in, no need for a tag. A double team. Double drop kick from Shima and Dragon Kid. As we said before, regular tag team partners will get each other inside out. Comes in with a hesitation drop kick. <laughs> it's gonna be a real challenge now for Dragon Kid, who's had this long standing rivalry with Yoshino to see Yoshino now at the absolute top of his game with the championship. To reawaken the competitive juices in Dragon Kid to try and once again match his eternal rival. And Yoshino reverses the situation. There's the tie. BB Hulk coming in the ring now. While Hulk has got a number of techniques, he's very well known for his strikes. We saw that earlier on. He was in there with Mochizuki, another striker. Immediately, standing shooting star press, so graceful, such a treat for these fans to see Pac spent so much of his time now over as a regular in the Dragon Gates. Shima, the shortcut there. Mochizuki and well, Pac is exactly where you don't want to be, and that's within the range of the strikes. Mochizuki. Opportunity now to try and work towards a submission. A variation of figure four lag lock there. Turns it around. Also, since a 
gives it a death walk to serve to serve to Tommy. Shima just coming in with a stop draws the ire of the fans. Suzuki makes the tag, I think. Maybe not. Yes, he did. Dragon Kid. Going to come in. Elbow right down to the knee. Park stands up, but immediately regrets that. Just taking chances to kick lumps with the chest of Pac. Come from Dragon Kid. Just a two. Interesting mucha variation. Indian death lock. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. A drop kick right to the face by Shima. Oh, he has that inverted Indian death lock on my tag mids. Shima coming in the ring legally this time, I hasten to add. Uh, and Masaki Machizuki has just seen an opportunity. He's limbering up. Oh my goodness. Axe kick. And I can tell you what you just seen. Shima's doing as well, making sure he cuts off the ring, standing between Park and his partners. Quick attempt, but Park blocks it. Goes the hit, but again, reversal from Park. Park is feeling it. He's feeling that British pride. Oh, he got just caught in the back of the head. Well, I know the adrenaline's flowing. I know he wants to do it for Britain, but Mark would have done well there to make the tie. Well, over the top. Mark with a flying drop kick, springboard. Blood is flowing. This is the opportunity. He's got to make a tag. He does. Here comes BB Hulk. Machizuki straight in there. Double team attempt again from the Warriors. Oh, BB, look at that. This Kung Fu movie action. You're an Augie. Kick. That time takes him down. Standing somersault sent on. Hawk is back in. He is so up for this. Watch out. Twisting plancha. Wipes out Dragon Kid. Yoshino still in the ring in there with Shima and this could be an opportunity for Yoshino to try and put Shima away but Shima reverses look at this tarantula-esque maneuver watch out 
Yoshino is getting a run up. Fastest wrestler in the universe with a drop kick to the head. Speed star indeed. Shiba comes back over the drop kick to the midsection. Duck under. It's a cover one, two. Just a two. Double stomp to the face from Shima. Oh, a wheelbarrow position kick to the side of the head, and I picked up. Chest breaker. Just a two. Mochizuki, not a regular tag team partner, but gelling very well here. And the reversal is coming around. Submission attempt by BB Hulk in the ring. Double Christo. Look at this. Talking about how these two men, the rivals for so long, pick up and drop the BB Hulk. Picked up but stunnered. Nice kinder. Could be it, but no. Once again, just a two kind. Well, you may think you drop Dragon Kid where you want them, but. Very rarely is that the case. Hulk ducking through. Springboard drop kick. There's a cover. Not enough body to body, just gets a two. Hulk and Yoshino teaming up. Look at Dragon again. Beautiful try to run and got Harbob for his troubles. Hawkbar coming in. Oh my goodness! Two spinning corkscrew moonsault from the back. Back over the top. Throws in the elbow, comes through. This is a high kick. Mochizuki does not. Alright, good reversal. Mochizuki shot in. Pat comes in, eats the axe kick. Elbows Mochizuki in the face. High kick. Oh, look at that. Enzigiri. There we go. Ruby Hulk and Park have got Mochizuki in all sorts of trouble. Triple team. Shima tries to intervene, cannot. Now that's a missile drop kick for the ages. And just a two. My baby. Trying to set up that EVO. Can't get it at least yet. Look at that, try to super kick, got swept. Oh! Mochizuki man just caved in BB Hulk's chest. Running Yakuza kick to the corner. BB Hulk in a lot of trouble right now. Mochizuki, if he can put him away, this is going to be his opportunity. Hulk firing back. Venus uppercut. Uh -oh. Shino tried to intervene, could not. Give the Hulk in. His 
transition possibly. The Dragon Kid with the biggest runner in the world. Oh my goodness, dumped him on his head. Meteora from Shima. Shima and Shima, Mochizuki. Just a two count once again. Kidding me, just a two count. Pack is upstairs, going for he's going for a shooting star press. And look at that reverse Rana. Double knee from Shima. And look at him. Pack in a bad position. Is Dragon Runner one, two, and oh no, just a two. This is breaking down. Right, the Ultra Hurricane Runner did not connect. A mouse from BB. Spinning back kick once again. There's the Torbellino cover. Hex <laughs> kick to the back of the head from Hulk. Followed up with a devastating kick. That's got to be it. No. Shima breaks it up. Charges in, followed by Yoshino. Followed by Pack. No elevated over the top. Pack kicked to the back of the heads. Look up into the EVO. Pack to the top rope. Oh, here we go. Sets oh my goodness! And it is over. Did you ever see a move like that? You winners, team of world one. And what a worthy main event this has been. Machizuki questioning him, but that was definitely a three count. That inverted 630 shooting star press from the man that gravity forgot. What a moment this must be for the Newcastle lads to come home as the break it champion and to display his technique and his ability in front of his home country it's been a pleasure for all of us to witness it what a show ladies and gentlemen we are only getting started tomorrow night in St. Ives it's Dragon Gate Invasion 2 I'm Irish Gio and I'm going to let you soak up the atmosphere here along with World 1 in Broxford Civic Hall be there tomorrow at St. Ives for Dragon Gate Invasion 2 
Let's go. I promise that we will be back. And uh, here we are.